Hey guys, it's Brian, and this is my new YouTube channel, Ethereal Gaming. I've been a Linux user exclusively for the past five or so years, and this channel is going to focus around Linux gaming, software, hardware, reviews, and things like that. So as a YouTube viewer, I've always wanted my favorite YouTube gamers to kind of give us a, an overview or a summary of their gaming rig. And I thought that giving a summary or overview of my gaming rig would be a really good way of uh, kind of introducing the channel. So I'm going to try to focus on the more interesting things in my computer. Uh, but if I miss anything or if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. So diving right in, this is my desktop. I run OpenSUSE Factory, which is a rolling release. So it's unlike Ubuntu or other Linux distributions that people may be familiar with. Uh, it's more like Arch in that it's a rolling release, so there's no fixed release dates. OpenSUSE is normally a fixed release date uh, distribution. Right now they're coming out with 13.2, uh, and OpenSUSE Factory is based on what will be in the next distribution. So for, all, for most intents and purposes, this is OpenSUSE 13.2, uh, but it is the rolling release version called Factory. Uh, I use KDE for my desktop environment, so this is KWIN powering this, uh, and I pull up a screen fetch so you can see everything that I'm using. I have it specifically configured to look like uh, XFCE, which is another popular window manager. It's designed to be very lightweight, and XFCE is, is not only lightweight in the overall interface, but it's also lightweight in uh, resources that the system uses. Uh, KDE has kind of a bad reputation for being somewhat of a resource hog, I have not found that to be true at all. In fact, I found it to be quite the opposite. When I use Ubuntu with Unity, I find that Unity takes up more resources than my KDE desktop does. Uh, and I'll talk about more, more about that in a second. So as far as how I have my system styled, let me show you a screen fetch. Screen fetch is an application that generates one of these. So this is OpenSUSE. It says that it's Harlequin, but OpenSUSE Factory, by its definition, is basically everything that they are planning to release in the next SUSE release. So that's 13.2. So that's why it thinks that it's Harlequin. It's not. It's Factory. But uh, Linux kernel 13.17. I'll talk about more. Talk more about that later. The desktop environment is KDE uh, 4.14. So it's not KDE 5. KDE 5 is supposed to be stable, I believe, but I haven't heard great things about it, and it's, it doesn't have all of the same features as KDE 4.x does, so I'm going to stick with KDE 4 until they come out with uh, the features that I want. So of course it's KWIN powering it. I think that you can actually run KDE with other window managers like OpenBox, uh, but I happen to like KWIN quite a lot. The KWIN theme I'm using is QT Curve, and that's how I'm able to change the, the window top bar or whatever status bar maybe whatever this is the window controls the the default window controls that come with KDE in my opinion are really stupid the buttons are are way bigger than they should be and they're they're round they're just really dumb and this is uh, it's using QT curve but it's using Numix to style it so it's a QT curve is a, a type of theme that is incredibly uh, customizable and this is designed to look more like a uh, Numix theme. So the GTK theme is Numix. Uh, the icon theme is, of course, Numix. And the color theme is actually a customized uh, Numix. So in some cases, normally this would be orange. I made it green because OpenSUSE's color scheme is green. So this is the system tray. Uh, these are, of course, launchers and icons and things. I have Steam running, of course. And I have uh, Origin running, which is running through uh, Wine. So this is my other workspace, and I use these plasmoids, which I really like. This is like Google Now. I've got a little solar system thing where these planets actually do move. I've got a nice little comic strip that sometimes works. XKCD doesn't seem to work as often as perhaps it should, uh, but these ones do, and that's nice. Of course, I have this... Um, Oh, what's the popular one? Conky, I think. Or whatever the launcher is. Uh, this is just a built-in plasmoid. Um, it's like a bunch of managers stacked on top of each other. You'll notice that I'm recording. I'm recording... Uh, you'll notice that also this, is, this panel is context-sensitive, so the applications that are running on this desktop only appear here and vice versa. But I'm recording audio and video, and I've got Origin and Steam going, so Origin is running through Wine, and I'm only using 1.5 gigs. So I'd say that's pretty damn good. 
All right, let's talk system specs. So we've got Linux kernel 3.17, of course. The latest is 3.18 RC1, but I'm not ready to upgrade to that quite yet. Uh, KDE platform version 4.14, host name, uh, my two hard drives. Pretty modest in size, really. The first one hosts only my uh, operating system, so the root directory. Uh, it's solid state, so there is that. This Western Digital is small, but it's pretty fast. It's old, I should probably replace it. Uh, Real-time memory statistics, that's pretty cool. Uh, I have 8 gigs of memory that is actually AMD Radeon brand, and I bought it because it matched to the motherboard really well, and I have it overclocked to 2133. It runs normally at 1866, but it overclocked, and, and that's kind of where we're at. I don't run a swap space. Whenever you install Linux, it's like, hey man, you should have a swap space, which is effectively the same thing as a Windows page file, but I've, I've never understood I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of good reasons, and I've tried to read and understand them, but I've yet to understand why in this day and age you would have a swap file, or a swap space, or a page file for that matter. 8 gigs is more than enough, and obviously my system will never use all of that. It keeps most of it in cache anyways. But anyways, um, moving on to graphical information. So, I am running an AMD graphics card. So it's an AMD processor, uh, A10 6800 quad core. Uh, I have it overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz, I think. 4.3, 4.5, something like that. It's normally at 3.9. So my graphics card is an AMD R7-260X, and AMD has kind of a poor reputation in the Linux community for offering really terrible Linux support. And in a lot of ways they deserve that, but in a lot of ways they don't. And for example, I'm using the open source Mesa driver, and I could use the proprietary Catalyst driver, uh, but honestly their proprietary Catalyst driver sucks, and they contribute quite a lot to the open source Mesa project. For whatever reason, their closed source driver sucks, which is in direct contrast to NVIDIA, who contributes virtually nothing to the open source community, but their proprietary driver is awesome. So there is that. Uh, I'm running the latest Mesa driver, so in, in Ubuntu 14.4 at the very least, uh, they have an, an older version of Mesa. I think that the latest Ubuntu that recently just came out a few weeks ago has the latest version of Mesa. So it offers a substantially better performance, especially in the world of AMD. So so the last thing I want to show you, and arguably the most important thing, is how I use this computer as a gaming rig, and to a lesser extent, uh, like a programming workstation when I work on open source projects. So I showed you before, uh, I've got Steam, which is over here. I play mostly the installed games, actually. Team Fortress, XCOM, Counter-Strike. I don't have a huge collection of games at this point. I would like to review most, if not all, of these games at some point in the future. I'm just not quite there yet. Uh, I have uh, Origin. That's what this is. Origin. Uh, I'm not actually doing anything with it. I could conceivably install most of these and play these. I have Battlefield 3 installed, but Battlefield 3 requires DirectX 10, which Wine doesn't fully support, so anything that requires DirectX 9 and below, Wine will play, generally speaking, flawlessly, so anything above DirectX 9 is a little sketchy. There are exceptions, like Far Cry will work, Far Cry 3 rather will work, and that uses DirectX 10, um, so there is that. Other than that, if I want to play, I have Steam for, for Windows here, actually. I think that I can launch it, but I'm not really going to put too much effort into it because I have... Oh, okay, there you go. So it's it's updating, I guess. So World of Tanks is another game I play. Uh, there's other games like Star Wars Old Republic I haven't installed on here, but I use Crossover, which is uh, like a GUI layer that sits on top of Wine that helps me launch all these things. Play on Linux does the same thing. I don't particularly like Play on Linux, so I use Crossover. So there's that. KDE ships with some pretty pretty basic games. I don't really do anything with them. And of course, Linux Excel itself has native games, most of which you don't want to play, and I will definitely be reviewing those in the future because many of them are just comical because the quality is so poor. So as far as being a workstation, most of the work I do, some sublime. Hey, don't hijack what I'm doing here. Sublime. I use Sublime for because I use Ruby. For the most part, that's my favorite uh, language of, of choice. And uh, I'm rudely interrupted here by uh, the, the Windows version of Steam. So I've got Skyrim installed. Uh, Planet Side 2 actually works pretty well. Uh, and I'll talk about that another time in Rainbow Six Vegas. Uh, 
another fun game. But anyways, so as far as programming, uh, Ruby is my favorite language. I said that. I use uh, Sublime for most of my development. It's really easy to use. Outside of that, I use C Sharp in my professional career. I don't particularly like C Sharp, surprisingly enough. Not it doesn't have anything to do with Microsoft. It's actually a really good language. I just it's not my language of choice. I like very lightweight interpreted language and languages, and Ruby fits that bill perfectly. So I have KDevelop on here, which is a very interesting IDE in this in a similar vein. It's like if Eclipse and Visual Studio had a baby, uh, KD or KDevelop would be it, and it's actually not bad at all. I hate Eclipse. I have a love-hate relationship with Visual Studio, and KDevelop actually isn't that bad. The only bad thing is that you can't do anything with Ruby. It's either C, C++, possibly Java, and Python, evidently. <laughs> That's nice. So there is that. Now, I noticed bef before I was recording, I was testing to make sure all this would work, and I noticed that I did not have uh, Mono Develop installed. And I'm going to go ahead and end the video with me installing Mono Develop, and I'm going to use Zipper. Zipper is like apt-cache, or apt-git, rather. Apt-cache is for searching. Apt-git on Ubuntu and other Debian distributions is for installing stuff. Zipper is the equivalent to that on OpenSUSE, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Maybe I'll talk about more about that later. But I'm going to go ahead and install this and cut the video off. So if you like what you see, of course, like the video, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if I missed anything or if you have any other questions, this was kind of a fast, unscripted, ad hoc video. And I'm sure I talked too fast and I missed a bunch of stuff. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or send me an email or whatever you want to do to contact me. So that will wrap this up. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.